Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Here's your host, Cyrus Webb. Welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. But for a radio audience tuning in here in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com, we're glad that you all could be with us. Also, tuning in to our friends at iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcast. We're glad you all could be with us as well. This is part of our News You Can Use segment here at WYAD, and today we're talking about investing in 2023. And we're going to be talking about something very special, and that is exchange-traded funds, or ETFs. This is a big milestone that's happened this year because the very first ETF launched in the United States 30 years ago, and since then, it has grown into a $9 trillion industry with more than 8,000 ETFs in the market globally. Here to talk to us more about what an ETF is, if you're new to it, but also how this can help you when it comes to investing, we're excited to welcome our guest today, Allison Bonds. Allison is with State Street Global Advisors that launched the first ETF. She's also going to talk to us about what you need to know about about it and where you can go for more information as well. Allison, thank you again for the time. I really do appreciate you stopping by. Thanks so much for having me, Cyrus. Well, we've talked about investing on this program in the past, uh, Allison, but I have to admit we've never talked about exchange-traded funds or ETFs before. So let's begin there, if you don't mind. What exactly is an ETF? Sure. Well, an ETF stands for exchange-traded funds, and they are really a basket of securities similar to a mutual fund, meaning that they tend to be diversified, but they're also similar to a stock in that they trade on an exchange like a stock does. Um, I like to, to think about them, since, since people are new to them, by breaking down the E, the T, and the F. So mm -hmm. the E stands for efficiency, and ETFs tend to be cost efficient. They're considerably less expensive than mutual funds generally. They also tend to be tax efficient, meaning that they are less likely to distribute capital gains the way that some mutual funds can. So that's the E. The T stands for transparency. You can see all of the ETF holdings at any time on the ETF issuer's website. And then finally, the S stands for flexibility. And that means that you have the flexibility to trade throughout the day with an ETF so you can respond more quickly to market changes. Um, I like to think of them in general as combining some of the best features of mutual funds with some of the best qualities of stocks. Love that, and I love the way you broke that down, Allison. I had a chance to visit the website at ssga.com, and we're going to post that for our audience as well, again, ssga.com. And there – for the State Street Global Advisors, one of the things that you all have done is you have a study um, that kind of talked about investors and what they believe is happening when it comes to ETFs. Talk to us about what you found in that study, Allison, because the thing that, that really struck me is that uh, it was reported that it, it seemed to make individuals feel like better investors. Why has that been the case, do you think? Sure. Well, like you said, at the end of last year, we conducted a global ETF impact survey. And really, the goal there was to understand how investors were feeling about the market, knowing how challenging 2022 was for everyone. And, you know, that was actually only the third time in history that we had both stocks and bonds um, down. And so it was a really difficult year, and we wanted to better understand how investors were feeling in that challenging environment. And to your point, the survey said that more than half of the investors – responded saying they felt ETFs made them a better investor. And, and as a matter of fact, 60% said that they felt ETFs have improved the overall performance of their portfolio. So as you can imagine, you know, we wanted to, to dig in and figure out why that was. And in the survey, the respondents said that they really valued a couple things. Number one, the diversification that we talked about that ETFs provide, this ability to get exposure to a basket of securities, but, but maybe more importantly, the respondents indicated that they really valued the F, that flexibility um, that we talked about with ETFs that enable, you know, one to buy and sell in real time throughout the day and respond more quickly to market changes. And I think last year, this year, we've all learned how important that is, the ability to move quickly, you know, in this environment. 
such a great point. And I think to that point then, and you mentioned this earlier, Alice, since I want to go back to it, um, when it comes to what SSGA has been able to do again, celebrating, of course, the, the 30th anniversary of the first ETF, you mentioned mutual funds. That's something we have talked about on this broadcast before. So for our audience that's trying to think about, okay, what may be right for them, if, would you mind explaining what the difference is between a mutual fund and an ETF? Well, I, I think it's, it's easier to start with what's similar. So okay. they're similar in the fact that they typically are a basket of securities. They both tend to be diversified, holding a number of securities. But what's different is that an ETF trades on the exchange like a stock does. So you can trade it all day throughout the day, and when markets move, you can have more control over the price that you buy or sell at, just like you would with a stock. Mutual funds do not trade on an exchange. When you buy or sell a mutual fund, you get the price that is struck at the end of day. That's what's called the net asset value or the NAV. And so if the market, if you decide in the morning, Cyrus, that you want to buy a certain, you know, ETF, and then you can buy it right at that time, right at that price. But if you had done that same thing with a mutual fund at the beginning of the day, you said, well, I'd like to buy it. You, so then the market moved throughout the day. You wouldn't, that, that buy order that you placed with the mutual fund would not get struck until the end of day at that net asset value. And it could be a different price than, than what it was at the beginning if the market had moved up or down. Um, the other differences in general, ETFs, tend to be less expensive than mutual funds. The average expense ratio for an exchange-traded fund or ETF is um, about half a percent. Average expense ratio for a mutual fund is about eight-tenths of a percent. So big, big price difference there on average. And then again, ETFs tend to be more tax efficient. They rarely distribute capital gains. Sometimes mutual funds do distribute capital gains. We saw that last year. And then finally, ETFs offer more transparency. So at any time, you can see all of the holdings in any ETF daily on an issuer's website. And mutual funds do not have that same requirement to disclose all of their holdings. Um, Many mutual funds will disclose the top 10 holdings, but, but you don't necessarily know every day what the holdings are. Many times there's a delay in knowing all holdings in a mutual fund. So those are some of the differences and some of the similarities. Yeah, I love that. I love that explanation as well, Alison. I think it's going to be very helpful for audience as well as they're kind of thinking about what may work better for them. So I mentioned that website earlier. Is that the best place for audience to go, ssga.com? That is the best place. So ssga.com, you can find any information about any of the ETFs that we offer. But also there's a ton of education there around how ETFs might fit within a broader portfolio. So that's a really good place to start. Allison, I really appreciate you joining us today to help us better understand what ETFs are, but also how they could be a great fit for our audience when it comes to investing. And it goes without saying, Allison, you're welcome back here anytime. Thanks so much, Cyrus. Appreciate you having me on. Glad to do it. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live, again, part of our News You Can Use segment here at WYAD. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live, and let's go make today amazing. Take care.